So hey guys and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I am going to walk you guys through how I am planning to create a spring unit study. So in my last video, I shared my spring homeschool plans and I kind of explained like places we would be going for field trips, um, places we would visit to see more about the spring life and stuff like that. I also mentioned a few books in that video as well, but today I'm here with so many books that I checked out from the library. And I just want to walk you guys through how I plan on creating our own unit study because believe it or not, I could have easily purchased one from other someone else's website, someone else's curriculum. But I was like, I think I'm going to enjoy it more if I kind of put this together myself because, because with homeschooling, as the parent, you learn so much with your children. And I personally have interest in learning about flowers, learning about herbs, learning about the different plants and things of that nature, and being able to identify them by name when I run across them. So yeah, let's get into it. I just want to break down some different categories that I want to study for spring, right? So of course, I want to go over the basics of spring, the weather, how long the spring season is, um, some things to look out for, what's unique to spring. But I also want to dive a little bit deeper into some of the concepts, right? So some of the things I have, I just wrote it down on a shipping label, <laughs> is um, butterflies. So we talked a little bit about butterflies and insects um, last year. Every time the spring come around, once we start to see them out, once this, you know the weather changes, they start to see new bugs. Then you know, of course, kids are very curious and ask questions about what, why they here, are they harmful, and things of that nature. So I have butterflies down. For that and I guess as I talk about the different topics I can pull books that I have here that'll be good for that and I think that'll go fit right into it so I said butterflies right um, I have not seen any butterflies just yet but last year I created a butterfly sensory being for my um, my, my now four-year-old um, and we read different books on it and stuff like that if I can find like the footage I'll put a picture of what it looks like I have a few books that I got from the library and a few books that I already had here for butterflies I have um two books that I picked up so far and um let me just say I am loving the big book of whatever series so this one right here is the big book of bugs and there is I think I have like three more over here um so let me see how i'm gonna do this but yeah the big book of bugs and in here of course it's going through the different bugs but i want to find the page on butterflies now with butterflies of course i want to be studying things like their life cycle um the different types of butterflies and things of that nature um what they eat you know things of that nature so here is the butterfly page in this book and so it covers things like the life cycle um and it explains the benefits of butterflies how they help seeds to grow and stuff like that so this is the first book i have the big book of bugs and i guess i can say studying bugs right so not just butterflies but bugs in general but i also have this book called a butterfly is patient and i had this book last year it's a really cute book they have a series as well um and yeah, I'll be sharing that. So I'm not sure if breaking it down with the books is the best thing to do. But basically with this one, it shares things like the different butterflies, like what the caterpillars look like and stuff like that. Um, and then, you know, talk about the life cycle, of course, how many days it takes for a butterfly to actually mature, how they help, um, which ones are poisonous beautiful illustrations by the way so yeah the first thing i want to talk about is butterflies it probably won't be like right now but more so when we start to see butterflies i haven't seen any i know our local zoo has a butterfly um kind of like area where they have so many butterflies in there it's a whole little what do you call it? display if you will that you can walk through um and it's really really cute so that's the first thing I want to talk about. I don't know how good I would be in <laughs> naming these by name. You know, kids are, you know, they pick up on things a lot. So, I do want to do butterflies. Um, I know our botanical gardens, you know, really good with that as well. They have a butterfly display. So, the zoo and the botanical gardens 
have that so that's what i have for that and we also may invest in a butterfly kit you know you can buy those off amazon or a specific website where they send you the caterpillar and you watch the butterfly as it changes its stages so i need to write that down myself because that would be really cool to see um i really enjoy this part of homeschooling being able to piece together resources and make it fit into our family and our lifestyle um so yeah that's the first thing the next thing that i want to go through is birds so y'all i have said i want to explore outside so i have another one of these books um this one is the big book of birds and y'all i am late discovering these books but i want to buy these for our home like i want this to be in our home library because this book goes into all the different type of birds the bird family tree being a bird watcher feather and flying the different types of birds eggs nest um city birds and stuff like that so it goes through the different type of birds in the category. So birds of prey, water birds, sea birds, woodland and forest birds, owls, sea birds, perching birds. Um, maybe I can get to see um, the different things. So for each different kind of bird, they have a, a page dedicated to it. For not all of them, but for most of them, right? So. Um, find something that's really cute. Flamingos, of course, we see those at the zoo. Um, uh, I'm not sure how many birds we'll be able to see in the water besides the ducks or whatever. But, parrots, those are usually at the zoo as well. I'm trying to figure out where we'll be able to see these birds. So, of course, they're sharing things about nests. Um, what's this? The eggs. We have a lot of birds that be on our front porch every day. So, um, yeah, so it has a dedicated page to the main birds. So this would be hummingbirds. They have something on peacocks, robins, swans, um, cranes, things of that nature. It talks about the different beaks and stuff like that. So what they eat. Um, the different types of beaks and stuff like that so that's the first book i have on birds super excited to explore this a little bit more and i'm considering doing each topic for two weeks right so one week maybe learning a great deal about it the next week the next week maybe going to the nature center to bird watch right um and creating a kit and stuff like that so i really wanted to make it fun i, I want to enjoy it um when we do start with birds i want to create a little kit right binoculars a sketch pad some bird flashcards so they can identify the birds that they see right um and what else maybe listen to like the bird songs do bird crafts y'all i have some dot marker pages that i created for spring and i have different birds in there so that's fun the other books that i have on birds is let's see i have a few so i have this one right here it says how to bird and it just goes into how to bird and it just goes into thank you son um how to bird watch for kids right so um it says are you a birder birds people who bird are called birders birders notice and observe wild birds in the habitat and it gives you know an idea of how to bird watch so it says something about a field guide binoculars um, a writing tool to draw or count how many birds you see a camera for pictures a field guide which is something we have to invest in because i don't really know these birds like that um and it just encourage kids to you know get out there and do it anybody can do it you know if we go to places with trees and water we're going to be able to see birds so so take a deep breath plant your feet um, and then it tells about the different noises that different birds make and it also names the different birds. So I'm excited about this, y'all. I'm really excited to be bird watching. We do have a local nature center near us, so I'm hoping that we can get, get together with other homeschool moms um, who are interested in nature studies and bird watching as well and go with that. I also have a book called Mama Built a Little Nest. Um, I haven't read this one, but I'm assuming it's all about. Uh. Thank you. It's all about nest. Um, 
stuff like that. I see different birds. Um, I'm a bit illuminated as well. She did. She fell on Okay, so yeah, this is just going through the different nests in different areas based on the different birds. So this would be a really good one to just explore a little bit and learn more about. Gives a little facts and has a cute little story. So I'm gonna start to explore a little more in the next book I have on birds is the little kids first book of birds. So this one isn't specific to spring, but just birds in general. Um and so it's a National Geographic's book. So you know how those are. So like it says, all birds have feathers and beaks and stuff like that. And it just goes into the different birds. Also, if you're interested in this book list, um, check the description box. I will be putting all of these books in a book list as well as topic to explore and field trip ideas. So the next topic I wanna cover it's gonna be frogs. Um, I really would like to dive a little more into like the frog life cycle. We've been studying animal, animal life cycles anyway, and I know during the springtime, you know, a lot of tadpoles and things of that nature is in the lakes, the pools, the ponds, um, and stuff like that. So I just have one book on frogs, unfortunately, but I'll be looking up more things. This book is called Be a Pun Detective, and it's just explaining different things in the pond so dragonflies this is not directly related to um frogs but it have other things that are in the pond so it has the different facts on frogs and toads the life cycle of frogs and toads so it's and then he's talking about mosquitoes and bugs and all that so maybe i need to um find another book on specific to frogs or whatever but i feel like this one is a good one especially if we are able to see little frogs and stuff like that so i feel like this would be a good one to explore but we shall see i'll give you an update on this, this one. so the next one i want to talk about isn't a specific subject but it's more so a cute little book that i love spencer no spring this is written by Black Author. Um, and in here, it's a cute little story. The spring is here. You know how I know. Um, and then it talks about all the signs of spring. So the weather, uh, you know, tornadoes, hurricanes, thunderstorms. And with the warm weather, we know flowers and trees come back to life. Grass come back and it's green again. Animals wake up from spring. Um, birds return in the spring. Animals are born, and it tells you different kind of animals like the bunnies, the otters, the deer. Um, talked about birds. Mama, mama. Okay. Mama, so mama. This is, mama. Thank you. Like that. Okay. So this one is cute if your little one has questions about spring or if you just want to introduce spring in a very fun way. Um, you know, and with this book alone, you can take it and break it into different topics. So talking about the spring weather, right? The animals that are born in the spring, um, the plants, the flowers, all of that stuff. So this is a really cute book and just found it. So the next thing I'm going to talk about are plants, right? More so plants and flowers. So for that, I have this book called From Seed to Plants, and this just goes through the life cycle from seeds to plant. It also shares, you know, different flowers and things in that nature. All of this is tied together into what I actually want to go into. This is a really good one. Um, tells about the different sizes of seeds, how pollination works, um, the different parts of the plant. Um, yeah, pollinators, the weather, how it impacts it, how the sun helps the um, seeds grow and stuff like that. So this is a really good one from Seed to Plant. I also checked out this book called Flowers Are Calling. This is a really cute book. And this one is like a, in a poetic, like a song like thing. And it just talks about different spring things, right? Flowers, bees. Birds, you get the names of different flowers, which I love because you know I'm trying to learn that. 
but this is a really cute story um yeah talked about cactus um the shapes the colors and the patterns of flowers Mama. the smell of flowers Mama. when they open yes blue um it said does your flower open in the daytime or the nighttime if it is a night bloomer it is calling to a night moth or nectar bat day bloomers are calling birds and insects who find food in the sunshine it said does your flower smell sweet or musky does it have any smell at all bees like sweet smells and beetles like fruity spicy scents Nighttime moths love flowers as fragrant as perfume. Bats love musky smells and some flies like rotten smells. So birds and butterflies use their eyes to find flowers instead of their smell. So this is very, very informational and it's cute. It's not too overwhelming, but it's very cute and it's very informative. So I love this. So, so cute. The next book I have is The Big Book of Blooms. And I just shared the other two, The Big Book of bugs in the big book of what was the other one birds so i have a big book of blooms and in this book how much time i got yeah in this book it just goes through all the family flower families the anatomy pollinators the colors um so roses blossoms water lilies cacti sunflowers orchids tulips seeds which are dangerous and deadly um and things of that nature very colorful love the flower anatomy page like i am so, oh did you see that like i'm so excited for all of this and as i said i want to kind of do like two weeks per topic but of course if we're outside and we're exploring then we should know you know how to maneuver through these things right and i really really want to invest in the big books of blooms like or all the whole series wonder can i convince my husband to buy these for us we shall see the next book i have on flowers is the hidden rainbow this is a really cute one for preschoolers kindergartners, just early learners in general this book focuses on colors plant names as well as counting so it's very very like simple but it's very effective right so it tells different things that you'll see but it's in a very i don't know it's not too overwhelming right so look at this page um this one is exploring the color red right and it says a tulip the next page yes you're right uh, the next page is for orange Mama. Thank you. And it's the, what is this called? The crocus. Um, and it's also talking about the bees. So it said, can you spot the three bees? So your child will have to count the bees on the page. One, two, three. Okay, let me get the top one. Thank you. And then the next page is yellow, where you learn something else. You learn about a clover. And then just count the bees. It's four. So every page it increases by one. With the clovers, it will be now five bees. Right? And as it continues, um, a new plant. So the hyacinth. Never the name of these, but we just read this book. So I got a little, you know, insight on what these are called. How to correctly pronounce the plant. And then, of course more bees added so they can count so working on colors counting and as well as learning the name of flowers um and it goes on until i think 10 and then it brings it all together for the rainbow colors it also tells about the different trees um and then it gives more information that you can read in the back about why bees are important um how it helps and stuff like that and these are the different trees apple peach pear blueberry plum blackberry so this is a really cute book that i'll probably be sharing um very very soon with an activity that you can go over this would be really good to be working on colors and counting um and it's good for the spring season so that's that the hidden rainbow 
The next book I have for just flowers or plants is this big book. My four-year-old is very interested in learning more about trees. So we just picked up this book this is by DK. It's called Trees, Leaves, Flowers, and Trees. This one explores all of these things in depth, right? So um, all the different um, fruit, like flowering plants, non-flowering plants, living with plants, like nuts, seeds, all the things in this book. So this is a really good resource to look back on. All throughout the year, it's not limited to only trees, of course. So it gives them a, a good view of the soft fruits, um, things that grow underground, what is the fruit or vegetable, the types of grasses. Y'all, it explores a lot. Blossom times, what's poisonous, the different type of cactus, the different type of roses, pollinators, flower forms, conifer, cones, pines and needles, like everything you could think of, this book has something on something in here. So, this is a really good one that I probably want to get for our home, home library as well, Trees, Leaves, Flowers, and Seeds. I'm going to look more into some things about trees with my four-year-old. She's just fascinated with trees right now. I just asked him the other day, what do you want to learn about? She said trees. So, we're going to get into that. Um, maybe looking at the different kind of trees because we do want to be able to identify the trees when we go to the park or just go outside or whatever the case may be and how they changed on the spring. So that's that. I have this book right here. It's called A Seed is Sleepy. Um, and so this one is basically talking about the different seeds. It's going to the different plants as well. So food as well as flowers. Um, and it's just give them a picture of what they look like and the different sizes and stuff so love this one i think they also have a book another book in this series called so there's a little picture at the back where it shows like all the seeds they're talking about and all the plants what it eventually grow into um things like coconut violet sunflower corn um strawberry dandelion blueberry pumpkin rice orchard papaya etc so this book is called a seed is sleepy and it's in the series of this book called here right this book right here a butterfly's patient and then i think the other book they have is called a nest is noisy or something like that and it goes into the birds and you know the eggs cracking and hatching and all that stuff so that's all i have so far for is it all I have, y'all? Oh, I have another book. So this one is called Plant, Plant the Tiny Seed. Um, here's another one that's really, really cute. Um, and it's just talking about like how you water a plant and how you have to wait for it. Um, it's very, very simple. One sentence per page. Um, and with this one, it's interactive. So it's telling you to do certain things. So shoo away the hungry snail. Um, tell the little bug good night. Uh, tap the cloud. So it's telling them to do different things in the book. You know, I think one of them says shake the seed. So this is an interactive book. Perfect for, um, you know, little learners. So this says rub the sun to make it hotter. So about the final sun, rub it. So it makes reading to them interactive and engaging. So that's another one. And then I feel like I had another book on plants, seeds, gardening, stuff like that. But I don't see it right now. So with that, we're just going to move on to something else. Did I talk about bugs? So I showed this one, Bugs A to Z. This is just naming bugs. So I put that over here. And then I only have, I want to explore kites and the science behind flying a kite, how much wind you need and stuff like this. But I only have one book. And so I have this book called Kite Day. Um, this is a cute little story that I'm sure my girls will enjoy. But I am gonna look more into, you know, how kites stay up in the air, um, how to build your own kite. Uh, we'll be going to buy kites very soon to go fly them at the park. So I think it'll be good to explore um wind kites how they up in the air the physics the science all of that behind it so that's another topic i want to discover but i wanted to get this little book because i thought it would be cute 
you know and it goes with the theme and with all of these things i want to do sense free bins um little crafts and activities and stuff like that so yeah and then i have a few more books here is another book in the big book series so this is the big book of nature art and um with this one it is so cute you use the natural resources like sticks and leaves and stuff like that and also recycled materials paper plates cups um everything that you find outside you know spoons forks tags all of this so it gives you like a little picture at the, at the top to see what you would need, but it's really, really cute. So this one is Honor of the Sea Seahorses. It's not spring related, but I'm just giving you an example of what it looks like, right? So right here it tells you you need paint, as well as a paper plate. What else got on here? Pencil, glue, um, paint brushes. Um, and just tell you to cut it and then tell you what to do next. Um, it has about owls, has um, picnic flies. So for this, you will need different things like fruit packaging, note cards, plastic, cardstock, beads, paint scissors, and googly eyes. Then we have the sneaky, a sneaky snake. Um, so this is really, really cute, y'all. This is really cute. And y'all know I am here for it. This one is creepy crawlers. I don't know why it went dark flower power how you make your own flowers for this you would need paper plates pine cones or, or seeds or lentils or beans or dry flowers pipe cleaners yarn card paints and glue i'm excited for this paper plate birds this one you would use um spoon fork paint scissors glue googly eyes and paper plates this is really really cute can y'all see this so you just cut the paper plate in different spots and then glue it to make a bird. So I'm excited about this. Really, really excited. They have stuff in my moths. And of course you're just using a lot of cardboard. So like the Amazon boxes that I get in, the cereal boxes, different stuff like that. I'm gonna say, I already have been saving it. So um, I'm just gonna put a few. So I'm excited. So so excited. Then what else do I have over here? I think I showed these in my other videos. I did pick up this book, Springtime Babies. So I, I mentioned like the spring, the animals that are born in spring usually. So we're going to probably get another book on that to explore, you know, the life cycles of these animals. What month they are usually born, how big they are and stuff like that. So that's it. Indoor garden I share, spring nonfiction books I share these. Um, what else? What else? What else? What else? So I want to say that's all of the books that I have so far. Um, and you want to open it like this? Thank you. So far I have a lot of books on seeds, plants, flowers. Um, thank you. I have a lot of books on birds. I have a lot of books on birds. Bird watching, I want to do that the most. Like bird watching and identifying plants and growing our own little flowers and things of that nature. So if you haven't checked out my other homeschool plants video, it'll give you more ideas on places to go and things to do. But in this video, I just wanted to share some books that we have. I am creating a book list for you guys so you can go and see all the books in one list. I probably add a little bit more than I mentioned in this video, but I didn't want to share that. And I also mentioned that I created some dot marker pages. So here is a sneak peek. Well, I've shared it on here in a shorts, but for gardening, we can do things like the watering can. Um, this is from birds. This is a hat, right? Flowers. Um, these are available on my website, by the way. Rainbow, butterfly. So if you did like the unit study, if I did put it out right, or if you're doing your own unit study, you just pick out some things that match, right? If you read a book on birds, why not do a bird activity? If you read a book on puns, right? Do something for ladies of puns. Um, if you read about flowers, here's a flower one, right? Windmill, wind, kites. You know, things like that. Birdhouse for birds. 
Um, this is for flowers, gardening, ice cream, you know, spring treats, warm treats, um, a snail, and then another one on flower pots. So I created those. I'm also working on, excuse the noise, working on some spring flashcards um, that I'll be uploading to my website very very soon hopefully this was helpful and beneficial in some way and somehow inspiring um i want to create like my own type of unit studies just to have control over what we go over how depth how in depth we do how in depth we do study these topics but all in all just to enjoy it as a mom who loves science who love you know starting to love nature a little bit more so if you have any questions, let me know. If you want to flip through of any specific book, let me know. And if not, I'll see you guys in my next video.